We may know that some of our favorite foods aren't the healthiest, but you might not have realized just what your snack of choice actually contains. From bugs to cleaning chemicals, The Hub is here today to make you think twice about some of the most common foods around. We here at The Hub like to keep you in the know about everything important. To make sure you don't miss out on the rest of our great videos, make sure to click the red subscribe button below. Marshmallows. They might just seem like something we enjoy eating over an open fire or in s'mores once the weather gets colder, but this winter, you might think twice about grabbing a packet of marshmallows from the store once you've heard what they're actually made out of. Marshmallows are typically made out of gelatin, egg whites, and sugar, which sounds innocent enough, but once you dig a little deeper, you'll realize that gelatin has more to it than you might have thought. It's typically made out of pig skin, but also contains elements of animal bone and hide, and occasionally, fish bones and skin too but it is possible to buy kosher gelatin or vegetarian gelatin. Kosher gelatin is instead made from fish remnants, while the vegetarian variety is usually made with agar sugar instead, which is natural and fully free from animal parts. But because marshmallows are so popular, the most common type on the market usually includes gelatin, and you might struggle to find those variations without. Gelatin is also found in some other sweet foods that you might not have expected, like ice cream and yogurt. But in terms of percentages, there's definitely more pig remains in marshmallows than either either of those last two items. Maybe, if you're a vegetarian or don't eat animals for other reasons, you should just stick to different types of candy. Pringles You might think that, like most chips, Pringles are made from potato. Well, we're here today to tell you that there's barely any actual potato in your favorite crisp, and you might be surprised as to what they're actually made out of. In fact, the tiny percentage of potato and Pringles mean they can't actually be called potato chips, but that's probably what you still know them as. Pringles are made up of a blended combination of wheat, rice, corn, and potato flakes. But sadly, this doesn't mean they're good for your digestive system or full of fiber, especially with the high fat content. Once this mixture has been pressed together into form of dough, it's pushed out, icing style, into tiny shapes on the industrial sized baking tray. If you weren't convinced by now that Pringles offer no nutritional benefit, consider this next part. They're covered in oil and heated to a crisp, pressed in the correct size, and then basically blow dried with powdered flavorings. Then they're stacked into piles and pushed out of the supermarkets all around the world. While these innocent potatoes might have once had some nutritional benefit, sadly, now they're nothing but a salty snack. But we know we'll still reach for them occasionally. Shredded Cheese it goes great on homemade pizza, it can be added to pasta as an easy dinner, or maybe you might even eat it by the handful as a snack. If you do the latter, you're not alone, we promise you. But have you ever wondered how shredded cheese stays in that format? If you know anything about cheese at all, then you'll know it has a low melting point, which is partially why we love it so much as an accompaniment to basically every food. But the reason why it doesn't melt easily isn't just because you've been storing it in the refrigerator correctly, because if you've ever accidentally left it out overnight, you'll realize it still doesn't melt. And there's something a bit strange there. And you guessed it, the reason is one of its main ingredients. And we bet you can't guess what it is. The proper name for the substance that keeps shredded cheese in its shredded format is cellulose. But when you pick the scientific term apart, you'll realize what you're actually eating is wood pulp. Yeah, that's right, powdered wood pulp. This is actually thought to be an advantage over other products because it's natural and repels moisture. This means that food manufacturers are using wood pulp instead of artificial ingredients because they think it's better for us. Gummy Worms Gummy worms are one of the oldest sweets around that we still enjoy today, although you might think twice after finishing this video. Gummy candies were created in the early 1920s by a German candy maker, and the gummy worm was thought to be developed in the 1980s. The first brand to do so was called Trolley, which you'll no doubt have enjoyed in your younger years, and possibly still today. Trolley set out to make a scene with everyone. The brand wanted to simultaneously shock parents with the colors of the sweets and attract children with them, and they succeeded. You might not be surprised to hear that gummy worms are made with gelatin, so we won't bore you with another reminder of the pig skin, bone, and cartilage that makes it up. Nope, with gummy worms, we're going to focus on the colorings. Two colors in particular, known as yellow number no. 5 and red number no. 40, have been banned by many governments around the world, but are somehow still allowed by the USA. Not only have they been linked to hyperactivity in children, but they also contain carcinogenic compounds, which can cause cancer. A lot of gummy worms only contain natural flavorings now, but you'll have to check the labels to be sure. Canned Mushrooms we don't imagine canned mushrooms are a popular element of your diet, but if they were before, then we're sorry because we don't think they will be for much longer. 
Fresh mushrooms, like most fresh foods, are definitely healthier, but they're also unlikely to contain small guests. You heard us right there, because canned mushrooms often come with maggots in the can, and the worst part of it all is that it's fine by our government standards. You see, mushrooms are fungus, and so it's only right that fungus attracts maggots. But what you might not think is so right is that we're just supposed to pick the maggots out of the can and pretend they're not there. We don't know about you, but finding maggots in a can holding food is definitely a problem for us. The reason behind the FDA thinking maggots are a fine accompaniment is because apparently it would be impractical to buy or harvest raw products that are entirely free of unavoidable defects. As a result, the FDA allows 19 maggots and 74 mites in every 3.5 ounce can of mushrooms. So if you're counting it out and find 20 maggots, you're allowed to complain to the store. But any less than that and you'll have to make do, we're afraid. Ground Beef A lot of people aren't keep on ground beef because it's weird color and shape, and we can't blame them. Ground beef can vary depending on the source. If you're buying it from a butcher or organic store, then it's highly likely that your beef will be nothing but, well, beef. But sadly, this isn't always the case. If you're buying your ground beef from a supermarket, then you'll probably find that, although it's made up of one animal, it's not just the nice parts you'll be making into a patty. It's here where the problems lie. There are two main things in cheap beef that you might not have been aware of. Firstly, if you've ever wondered why it's such a bright color, it's due to nitrogen. This and carbon dioxide are added to the meat to give it the desirable color. However, it does mess with our perception of it being fresh, so you'll still have to give it a sniff. The second thing you might find is bacteria. When ground beef is made, it can come from many different cuts or sources. These have all been traced and tracked. This also means you're far more likely to accidentally leave some E. coli or salmonella lurking in its red depths. Chewing gum. Before World War I, chewing gum was most commonly seen in the form of chicle mixed with flavorings. This weird sounding food was a form of latex sap from the sapodilla tree in Central America, so it was basically a form of rubber. After the war, chemists figured out how to replace chicle with a new replacement, which is where the gross elements come in. Chickle was replaced with the substance called lanolin, which might sound more chemical based than it actually is. Lanolin is a waxy secretion that comes from the sebaceous glands of the skin of sheep. In its natural form, it has a good use, which is to keep sheepskin waterproof. Now, most of the time it's generally used in sheep products, but every so often it's used in chewing gum too. But don't go looking on the label for sheep products, because you won't find it there. It's considered to be part of the natural, chewable part of gum and is, as a result, not listed. Sure, you might see a few gum-based phrases, but you'll never actually see the word lanolin on your wrapper. It's perfectly natural, but pretty gross. Bread one of the best comfort foods out there is the simple loaf of bread. Spread peanut butter and jelly on it for a great sandwich, or toast it with cheese for the ultimate easy dinner. But our honest loaf of bread might not be so honest after all. Sure, it might be made up of a few basic ingredients, but bread bought from supermarkets often includes ingredients that aren't listed or that aren't specifically included to improve the taste. One of the most important factors when it comes to creating mass production food is how good it looks. Consumers are very visual and are far more likely to buy a loaf of bread if it looks good, even if the slightly wonky one next to it has a better value or nicer ingredients. So you might not be so surprised after all to hear that lots of bread contains chlorine. You might associate that chemical with swimming pools and disinfectant, but chlorine has been added to bread for years to give it that nice, bleached appearance that we're all used to. In small doses, it's very unlikely to harm us, but taking in a lot of chlorine is undoubtedly dangerous for humans, especially long term. It's not only used in bread, but also in other flour-based products like cookies, pasta, donuts, and cereal. Red dye. Red food coloring has had its fair share of problems over the years. First, there was red number 40, which was banned internationally as we've already listed. And now there's a natural red dye. But we're not so sure if we're a fan of that one either, because we can't complain that this red dye is unnatural. But the problem is that it's a little too close to home and, in our opinion, a little too natural. You'll find natural red dye most commonly in sweet things like red velvet cupcakes. But there's nothing velvety about this natural color, because it's made of crushed bugs. That's right, real insects are used in some of our favorite foods. They're known scientifically as cochineal insects, and their pre-crushed state look absolutely disgusting. We couldn't imagine them in our snack foods, which is probably why they're kept fairly low-key. 
These bugs spend their lives in the prickly pear cacti in North America and produce a bitter, crimson-colored pigment called carminic acid, which they use to keep unwanted predators away. When they're crushed, they're mixed with water, which provides the bright red shade we associate so closely with common sweets. Chocolate If you're a particularly fussy eater, you might have somehow managed to get through this list relatively unharmed. Unfortunately, we're about to put an end to all of that with our last fact. You're probably wondering what could possibly be wrong with chocolate. Surely, it's just made of milk, cocoa, and a few other ingredients, right? Don't worry, you're right, but you might occasionally find an extra ingredient once you pull back the wrapper. Or worse, once you've taken a bite. Chocolate is produced so much and in such great quantities that it's hard to quality control all of it. So instead of taking extra precautions, which, you know, would be a good thing to do, the FDA thinks it's okay to every so often find a rat hair in your chocolate. That's correct. And if you're eating chocolate now, then you might want to take a double check before your next mouthful. The FDA allows one rat hair per 100 grams in six 100 gram subsamples of chocolate. And it's not only chocolate where you might find rat hair. If you're a fan of baking, then you'll have to be extra cautious because in every 50 grams of cinnamon and 25 grams of ground propica, the FDA allows 10 rodent hairs. Has this video made you think twice about reaching for a bar of chocolate or making some toast? We can only apologize, but we know we'll probably keep eating them too. We hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you next time. Thanks!